Compliance testing helps ensure that a specific implementation of automotive Ethernet will interoperate with other devices and helps to quantify design margins. The tests are defined in industry standards. For 100 base T1, tests are defined in the IEEE 802.3 BW standard. 1000 base T1 tests are defined in the IEEE 802.3 BP standard. The standards define the test procedures and limits and also the test modes which automotive Ethernet devices must support. These modes provide the signals we'll use to evaluate the electrical characteristics of the interface. For example, the 1000 base T1 spec defines six test modes. To perform the electrical tests, the recommended oscilloscope bandwidth is 1 GHz or greater for 100 base T1 and 2 GHz or greater for 1000 base T1 measurements. Along with the scope, Tektronix recommends a TDP 1500 differential probe for 100 base T1 and a TDP 3500 differential probe for 1000 base T1. For this demonstration, we'll use a 2 GHz 5 series MSO oscilloscope. Return loss and transmitter distortion tests also use an arbitrary waveform generator. The Tektronix TF XGBT fixture provides the test connections for measurements. The TF BRR CFD clock frequency divider converts the device under test transmitter clock to a 10 megahertz reference signal. It's used for synchronizing the oscilloscope and signal source with the DUT. So the device under test is connected to the test fixture, and we have a TDP 3500 differential probe connected to the plus and minus signal lines on the fixture. The other end of the differential probe is connected to channel one of the scope. The Tech Express Automotive Ethernet testing software is launched from the application menu. We need to tell the software about the device under test. The software supports 1000 base T1 as well as 100 base T1. In this case, we want to test our DUT to the 1000 base T1 spec. Checking the connections, we've connected the test fixture to the probe, and the probe is on channel 1 of the scope. Now we're going to choose which tests we're going to perform. The tests are all listed as well as the required test modes for the DUT. We have transmitter clock frequency, transmitter timing jitter, uh, droop test, and power spectral density, peak differential output, and distortion and retor return loss measurements. For this example, we'll run the power spectral density, or PSD, test. First, we need to put the device under test in test mode 5. This will cause the DUT to generate the correct signals for the PSD test. Once the DUT starts transmitting, the test mode 5 signal, we'll click on power spectral density. We are properly connected and the DUT is transmitting the test mode 5 signal. So now we can go to the acquisition panel. There are a few controls on the acquisition panel. For example, signal validation checks to see if the signal is valid or not. I'll set it to prompt me if the signal fails. Then we can start performing the test. Once the test is performed, it automatically acquires the test mode 5 signal from the DUT and performs the PSD test and analysis. Once the test is completed, the software will analyze the signal and give you a compliance report. The report includes detailed information for each test, which includes plots. This example shows a power spectral plot. The measurement falls within the mask defined in the specification, so the test is passing. You can specify the output of the report as PDF, CSV, or MHT formats, whatever works better for you.